There are heaps of reasons why you might end up with flat looking photos from a photo shoot. Maybe you were planning on doing a golden hour session when the light is beautiful, but your clients are just not available at that time. Maybe it ended up being a really overcast and gloomy day on the day of the photo shoot, or maybe like today, it was nice and sunny, but then these storm clouds came in and the sun is just not cutting through anymore. So instead of ending up with flat photos like this, today I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Small Rig and we're gonna be checking out these new lightweight portable lights. So this is the RC60B and I'm gonna be walking you through everything available with these lights and showing you what they're capable of when using them on location for photography and videography. I've got a really cool shot that I wanna try just here. I wanna get nice and low and crouch in those fields there so we can get a little bit of layers from the field. So this is a wireless light with a built-in battery. It weighs 750. 50 grams, meaning it's a super compact and lightweight light and it's small enough to keep in your camera bag for situations where the natural light might not be cutting it or you want to create more dynamic in your photos. As an example, to show you how convenient these lights can be, this is what my camera bag usually looks like when I'm heading out to photograph a wedding. And now I've just added in one of these lights to take with me as well. It doesn't take up a huge amount of space and it's about the same weight as a typical prime lens. Look how cute this little softbox is. I'm gonna start with a simple one light setup. You can either mount these lights on a tripod or a C-stand, or you can also use these hand grips and just attach it to the bottom of the light. So you can give this to your assistant to hold or your second shooter, or it's honestly pretty lightweight that you can just hold it yourself in one hand while taking photos in the other. Since I have it on a tripod, I am using the tilt attachment instead, so I can have the softbox at an angle towards my face. So one of the problems that you'll probably find shooting portraits on an overcast, glary day like today is that you can even see it right now in video where my eyes are kind of dark right here underneath my eyebrows and it doesn't give my face that kind of pop. So I've got the softbox set up here for some fill light on my face and we'll see what a difference that makes. I'll show you a before and after photo and that's what it looks like in the video. So it does pack quite a punch, even though it's very small, and I do have it on 100% strength right now. This RC60B light with the reflector is capable of reaching up to 13,000 lux at one meter, while the bare light has a strength of 2,500 lux. So I've got a shot here that I like. I'm gonna take a photo without the light so you can see what it looks like. And then I'll kindly ask Dan to turn the light on and we can see the difference. So I've brought the camera closer to me and the light a bit closer to me as well, just for some more headshotty type photos. <laughs> and I currently have the light on at 30%. So again, I'll show you a before and after of what it looks like with and without the light, but having this on just makes me pop in the shot so much more. So let's take a look at the build of this light. So on the back, we have an on and off switch, a USB-C port and an eco switch, which brings down the brightness, it extends the runtime and reduces the fan noise. To the side, we have the main controls of the light. So there are two dials. One controls the temperature and the other controls the intensity of the light. You can turn to adjust these values and you can also push the dials in for shortcuts to brightness and temperature presets. There is a mode button, which then lets you switch between different lighting effects and you can tweak the time of those effects. And there is also a 1.3 inch LED color screen so you can see and control all those settings. On the bottom is a standard quarter inch thread. On the top, you can see the exhaust fan and the heat sink. And there is also a release button for the mount. The mount, by the way, resembles a Bowen's mount, but is much, much smaller. So here's a side by side and you can get an idea of just how tiny these lights are. I've also got a second light set up now as kind of like a side backlight kind of thing going on. So that's our next setup. And I'm gonna change my camera to be in portrait orientation. Tell me I'm not the only one that opens and closes my tripod like this. This should be illegal. <laughs> Trying to make the wind work. So these lights are ready to use out of the box. So let's take a look at what each kit comes with. So we have a carry case, which includes the light, a reflector, a hand grip, the tilt mount, and a USB-C cable. These lights can last for up to 40 minutes at full power and supports up to 100 watt PD type C input, which lets you charge and use the light simultaneously. Altogether, the overall weight, including the accessories and the carry case is around 1.5 kilos. And finally, I have another before and after for you with this two light setup. 
I think that's it for the crouching shots. Now I want to try a standing up shot. This is a good spot to stand because I've flattened it out now. And I want to get some movement. Thanks for your jumper, Dan. <laughs> Sorry. You can also get this little clip attachment separately, which just goes on the back of the light here that you can attach a power bank to. I also have the VB99 and VB99 Pro batteries, which you can also use via USB-C. Let me take a test shot. <gasps> Yay, it's like glowing. I'm gonna have to, oh, I can hold like my dress and then the remote behind. <laughs> so I have my standing shot set up and I'm using two lights kind of as side backlights. So they're behind me. So I've got one of these lights up on a taller tripod. So it's going to add some light here to the top half of my head slash body. And then I have the other light on a smaller tripod, which is gonna cause some rim light on my dress as I spin it around. One of the reasons to consider using continuous lights on location for your photography rather than strobes is continuous lighting is so easy to blend in with natural lighting. For these photos, I'm not trying to completely light up the subject and have the background be super dark. I still want it to look like natural light while helping the subject subtly pop in the frame. Continuous lighting is also great if you tend to work with video quite a lot too. You can see that in action for pretty much this entire video with the behind the scenes shots Dan is getting of me. The video and photo quality match really nicely. So here's another little before and after with the lights off and on. As you can see with the lights on, I just pop out of the frame so much more and it kind of emulates a little bit what it would be like if we had sun because right now the lighting is just so flat and boring. And I am putting some effort into it. I'm not making the before photos look bad on purpose. I'm trying to pose for them properly so we can see a good before and after. The before photo looks fine, but it's missing the lighting required to make it really stand out. If I had the choice, I wouldn't go out of my way to shoot portraits when the light looks like this because I know these would be the results. So with these two lights I set up, you have a soft and subtle glow around the subject. It's not overly obvious they lit up with artificial light but it is enough to make a big difference in the final image. I'm gonna set this light as our direct backlight and I'm gonna put it on a super warm setting so I've got it on 2900 Kelvin. I'd like the light to kind of be around here in my face. It's maybe there. So I kind of got some moody shots where it's like a bit more like shapey, so I'm gonna do a little bit more of that as well. These lights have a 60 watt bicolor light source and the color temperature ranges from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, which is another reason I prefer lights like this rather than using flash. So here are a couple of photos where you can see what it looks like on location with the reflector and set to the warmest temperature available. So I love how moody those shots were, but I feel like I want to bring it back up and get some more like traditional looking portraits now. So I have brought down the shutter speed of my camera and now I'm going to turn down all the lights so we can match the exposure. I feel like that one was the brightest. So we're back down to a two light setup for this last shot. I've got this light still here up high for my side light and I've got that light all the way back there as my backlight and I moved it further away from me as well. <laughs> Dan's the videographer and the photographer. The wind was making it so difficult at this point to get any more close-up portraits, but I do have this one to show you how nice the backlight can be on the warmer setting for a headshot. Since I'm going to take more environmental portraits though, I'm going to match the temperature of the backlight to the cooler temperature of the side light. I did mention this light has a fan. When using it outdoors, I can't hear it over the noise of the environment. When using it indoors on the brighter setting available, it's not a silent fan, but it is pretty quiet. Depending where you position yourself, your mic and your light, you can get away with filming audio indoors with the light on. That is all I have for today's video. I really hope you found that helpful. And if you want to check out more information about the lights, please be sure to use the link in my description. And let me know what you think. Do you ever use lighting when doing photography out on location? I'm curious, so let me know in the comments. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.